Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video from Maranatha. We hope that you are encouraged by watching this and our prayer is, is that you would encounter Jesus right where you are today. God is good, amen. 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 You might see a different side of me tonight. I'm in full on camp mode. Uh, so we've been uh, doing Camp Create. Where's my Camp Create crew? Yeah, what's up, guys? Woo! You guys are awesome. <laughs> uh, so we're on day three. We just finished day three. Um, if you don't know what Camp Create is, we get these kids who are uh, interested in uh, making movies, and we make movies from start to finish. And um, it's awesome. I, I, I love it. Like, it wears me out. You guys wear me out. I love you. Uh, but you, you, you wear me out. Um, and I'm sure that we wear you out. I heard a kid today just passing by. They said, making movies hard. <laughs> I'm like, you're right. It is. It's, it is. But it's, it's, it's awesome to think that there's 25 kids here within our church that are, are writing their own films, that are storyboarding their own films, that are uh, coming up with their own scripts and dialogue for people to say on screen, and they're gonna, put all, they're gonna film it all, and they're gonna put it all together. And August 10th, say August 10th. August 10th, August 10th um, we are going to have a Camp Create Film Festival. And uh, it's gonna be awesome. Listen, it's super exciting, because last year, we just about killed ourselves and each other trying to do it all in one week. And... Uh, we still had a week of camp this year, but last year we decided uh, for whatever reason to have the premiere that Saturday. Terrible idea. Say terrible idea. Thank you. I will remember you saying that because that, we're never doing that again. Um, but this year we are having the week of camp, but we are not having the premiere or the film festival until August 10th. Last year we had the premiere, the movie night, about 250, 300 people showed up to watch the movie here in the sanctuary. But this year we have rented out the Alban Theater on Main Street and we will be having a red carpet and uh, all the movies are gonna be shown and we're giving out awards. So I told the kids, I said, don't go home crying if you lose because you're going to lose. That's real life, amen? Not, there's no participation trophies in Camp Create. So praise God. <laughs> I love you, I swear I do, but you might lose. If you can't act, you can't act. I mean, I'm sorry, praise God. Maybe you'll get better. Amen. So it's been a great week. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the next two days uh, with you guys continuing to, uh, to go through this together. Uh, but tonight we're going to focus on the book of Ephesians. How many of you were here two weeks ago? We uh, talked about the Ephesians book study and I gave out these books to all of you, which I expect all of you to have in your hand right now. Who does not have one of these in their hand? Don't be ashamed. Okay, if you don't have one, keep your hand up. We're gonna try to get you one right now, okay? Um, and I will explain this a little bit, but I'm not gonna spend a ton of time explaining it. Um, if you really want to know more about it, uh, go, go to our YouTube uh, page and watch two weeks ago. Uh, you'll learn more about the introduction to this book study. So keep your hand up if you don't have one of these and we will, uh, we will get one to you, okay? Um, but two weeks ago, we, we uh, started an introduction into the book of Ephesians. And uh, the book of Ephesians is six chapters, so we're going to have six different uh, services, six different Wednesday nights, where we are going to go through a chapter at a time, okay? Those of you who did already have books, how many of you were able to uh, do, do the daily thoughts uh, for, for the church? Um, I know I'm at, your hand's already raised, and you're like, I don't know if you want me to put my other hand up, or, but we'll get all of them up eventually. Um, but daily thoughts for the church are uh, something that encourages you. It's here in your book. But um, it encourages you to just pick a verse out of the chapter that we're going to be studying the next week um, and, and just meditate over that verse. And uh, you can go through those in your book and, um, and just, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you just to read through um, the chapter that we're going to study, which tonight is chapter one. Um, if you're, if you're going to be here next week, we'll of course be studying chapter two. But um, just pick out a verse out of chapter two and just let the Lord lead you and say, you know, Lord, where do you want, which one uh, do you want to speak to me through? And uh, allow him to speak to you through that verse and meditate upon that verse. The word says to do that, amen? It says to medita meditate upon God's word daily. And, uh, and, and if we're not doing that, we're not getting fed. And if we're not getting fed, we're malnourished. We're spiritually malnourished and we will spiritually die if we don't have God's word living on the inside of us, if we're not taking it in on a daily basis. The word does not instruct us to receive God's word only on Sundays and Wednesdays. I don't know if your translation says that, but if it does, it's the wrong one. Because it says daily bread. 
Amen? That we should be taking in God's word on a daily basis, it's, it, whether it's through an app, whether it's through uh, re- getting up in the morning and reading, you know, reading a, a chapter or reading some verses that God has led you to read. Uh, try your best to, to, uh, to take in this daily bread because it will literally change your life. I mean that it will change your life uh, f- for the better. Amen. So um, do that. Uh, do the uh, daily thoughts. It'll, it'll really help you because it's not overwhelming. It's just taking a verse a day like Ephesians 1, 3, which says uh, that we are blessed in, he- in the heavenly places. Uh, and we already have, our Father in heaven has already poured out every spiritual blessing for us who are in Christ. And if you could just think about just that verse by itself, come on, just think about that, that, we, that everything that God has stored up in heaven, which every good and perfect gift comes from him up there and it comes down to, to his children who are without doubt. And it's, it, and it's all available to us. He says, whatsoever things we desire, just ask. He'll give it, gladly he'll give it. If we ask for bread, he won't give us a stone. We've got to get into a place where we can start to meditate upon God's word and let it nourish our bodies and let it uh, uh, bring life into us, man. If we're not reading God's word, we have no life going into us. We're like the Dead Sea, right? uh, How many of you have been there? You just float. Why is that? Because there's no outlet. It just continues to to go in and go in and go in and and nobody lets it out. They just, it's all those minerals and everything that just fill up in that lake or that that sea and uh, it has no outlet. So if we're not taking in those things and we're not letting them out to the city, to the streets, to those who work with us, whatever, we're going to be just like the Dead Sea, we're gonna die ourselves, amen? So we gotta let, get that stuff in and we gotta let it go out uh, in Jesus' name. We're, we're, uh, it's, it's essential, amen? So tonight we're gonna um, dive deeper into Ephesians chapter one. Um, we're gonna uh, read through the chapter together. Uh, but I, I wanted to do something different, if that's okay with you, and, and it's going to require both of us doing something different. But um, I want to read through the entire chapter to start. And I want to do this because this is the way that it would have come to the, uh, the region of Ephesus. It would have come to them in this way. It would have come, uh, Paul was imprisoned in about 62, 64 AD when this letter was written, and, um, and, it came, and, and he had a word from God for this region and he wrote them a letter being imprisoned and he sent it with, I think, Tychicus or something like that. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but he had Tychicus or whoever, uh, we'll just call him T-Man for now. He had T-Man uh, take the letter to the region of Ephesus and um, tonight I want us to receive that letter just like that region would have. Um, that they would have all gathered together in a house that was really close to when the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts chapter two. So the church was really young. Uh, they, they were still huddling because there were still people who were uh, trying to fit, find them out and, and kill them. So they were huddling together and they would receive a letter uh, from T-Man and they would sit down and they would all uh, receive the letter together. So what I want you to do tonight, it's a little bit different, but I don't want you to pay attention to the screen. I don't want you to pay attention to anyone around you. Uh, we've got this letter here from the apostle, uh, the apostle, the apostle Paul, and uh, it's it's uh, from prison, which is very cheesy. I'm sorry, but it, uh, it's a letter. It's uh, uh, sent to us. And what I want us to do tonight is I just want to get rid of all distractions. Um, so, if you're able to do this, I just want you to close your eyes. And my desire is that you would receive at least this first chapter with fresh revelation. That you, would, that you wouldn't uh, be on your phone or, or talking to your neighbor, that you would just receive God's word in a way that maybe you never have before, that you could just listen to it like it's coming to you for the first time, amen? So um, I've got this letter here from Paul and I'm just gonna sit down just like we would back in 64 AD and I'm just gonna read it to you, okay? So just close your eyes, don't focus on anything else. Try your best to, to let your mind, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and pray. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that, that in this room and, and those watching on, online, Lord, and maybe even watching an archive later on, Father, that they would receive your word. And Lord, I pray right now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to fall in this room. Father, I pray that our eyes would be enlightened. Lord, I pray that our, our minds would be opened up to the hope that you have called us to, God. I pray that we would receive your word without distraction, without any... Uh, any uh, 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 thoughts overtaking our mind, Lord, I pray that we would receive your word, Lord. I pray that we would not focus on what's going on around us, what's going on beside us, Lord, that we would receive your word, Lord, that we would open our hearts, Lord, that we, we could uh, hear what it is that you have to say to us through this letter because it's for us, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. All right, eyes closed. I'm just gonna read the, the chapter to you. 
So it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus in accordance with the pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness and sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Paul says, for this reason, ever since I heard of your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the richest, glorious inheritance of his holy people, his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all authority and power and rule and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only for the present age, but also the age to come. God has placed all things under his feet and he has appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Amen. Amen. So that is... The first chapter of, of six chapters, which of course when the letter came to the church, it wasn't in chapters, it was all in one letter. Um, but Paul uh, has, a, has a way here of addressing the church in Ephesus um, because he knows there's a couple of things that the church in that region is struggling with. There, uh, the predominant uh, religion in Ephesus at this time was that they would r- worship this uh, female goddess by the name of Diana, Okay. And uh, it it was just, the church was very twisted. The church was very, um, uh, there was a lot of sexual uh, misconduct going on within the church. There was a whole lot of people believing things that weren't even biblical. There was a whole lot of people that just were believing in all these different gods, little G, not big G, not not the God. They They were believing in all these different gods and goddesses and they were actually taking scripture. They were taking Old Testament scripture, the Torah, and they began to twist it so it fit their own uh, beliefs. And uh, Paul heard of this. He, 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 he knew that the Ephesians, that they knew uh, at one point in time who God was and not only who God was, but who they were in God or who they were in uh, his son, Christ Jesus. So um, we, can, we can look at the, um, the first few verses and and even in the first few verses, Paul begins to uh, boldly and, and, um, and, and strongly remind them of who they are in Christ. Uh, he says that uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is verse three, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So he reminds us of two things right here in the greeting. is First, he reminds us who our Father is, who God is, and then he reminds us who we are and what it is that we have, not only with blessings, but also uh, power from one high, who we are in Christ. All right, uh, if you've read through this chapter, I wanna give you a little uh, quiz right off the bat here because this is a book study. Um, by show of hands, uh, uh, give me your best guess of how many times within this chapter Paul says that we are either in Christ or in him. No hands? Take a guess. What do you got? 10, all right, not it. Anybody else? Right here? What's that? Five? Nope. Geraldine, seven, closer. Is that closer? Come on, eight, 10, nine. Okay, somebody got it. Good job, guys. It's the process of elimination. Good job. Um, Nine times within one chapter, Paul says that we are in Christ or that we are in him, that he reminds us of who we are in Christ or in him. And that is, that's, that's just, 
Nomenclature that's really not found in, in any of the, uh, most, most all of the other uh, letters that are written to regions is that he is very adamant about reminding these people in Ephesus of who they are in Christ. Not only reminding them of who God is, like big G, the, the God is, but who they, are in, uh, who they are in Christ. So he greets them with that. And I love that he starts in verse three. He says, praise be to the God of our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. I love that the first word after he greets the, the region is praise. I love that Paul, he is always leading with praise. He is always going praise first. He is, regardless of if he's in prison or if he's in front of, you know, uh, kings and leaders, his first words are always praise out of his mouth because he knows where his power comes from. He knows that he was the least of the least. He knows that he was the worst sinner of all the sinners. So he knows that his praise, or who the one that his his, his, uh, power comes from. So he gives praise first. And it's an Old Testament model. It's so crazy that you would see that there would be a, 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 a troop or a, an army in the Old Testament and they would have all the different uh, people. They would have warriors. They would have uh, uh, pra- uh, praise people, worship leaders. They would have people that carry flags. They would have people that uh, you know, are, are different levels of the army, but they would always send those with uh, horns and with a voice in first. They would send those who were worship leaders who would praise first. And I love that because that's, that's the model that we ourselves should follow is that regardless of what we face in life, that we should always praise first. You get a flat tire, well, praise God. Remember what Pastor Pastor Dan was talking about up here on Sunday, that he's got an employee that no matter what it is, that they're always praising God first. That's the model that we should follow, is that regardless of what we face in life, whether it's good or bad, that we should praise first. Why? Because it reminds us of where that's coming from, of where our power comes from. Uh, of, of where any kind of blessing in our life or any kind of favor that's on our life comes from. If we, if we praise first, we keep that uh, perspective uh, correct whenever we uh, keep that lifestyle of praise first, amen? So he says, praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus uh, and, uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, he says, blessed are we for every spiritual blessing comes from him who is in heaven. And I think that we forget this at times that we get caught up in life and we, you know, we get focused on, on what's happening here on earth or what's happening uh, in our daily life and we forget that every spiritual blessing has already been poured out on, li- on our lives for those who believe in Christ. How many of you believe in Christ? Right? How many of you know that because of that you have access to your Father in heaven? Yeah. Everything that he has, you have. Not when you die and when you go to him, it's, it's you have it now. The key word here for this chapter is awareness, is that there are times in our life when circumstances come to us, when, when things come at us that we forget the blessings that we have in our Father. Just even the blessing of having a relationship with Him, a, a blessing of knowing that we get to spend eternity with Him. Come on, think about that, guys. That no matter what you face in this life, it, it, it doesn't, it, in the light of eternity, it doesn't matter. <laughs> If we're ever, I just encourage you, if you're ever going through a trial or if you're ever going through a rough circumstance, just remind yourself, man, I get to spend eternity with my father and everything that he has, life, blessing, all these things that he has, I have access to right now, not later, right now. Right now I have it. So he encourages us in this in the next few verses. Um, I want all of you to get a pen if, you, if you're able to or get the notes app open on your phone because I want you to write some things down as we go through this. Um, We're going to read through verses 4 through 14, and I'm going to ask you to write these words down because this is who Paul is reminding us uh, that we are in Christ. These are uh, 10 things that Paul reminds us uh, that that, that who we are in Christ as we go through these verses. So he says this in verse 4. He says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So I want you to write these words down because this is who you are in Christ. You are chosen. I want you to write down chosen. He says he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy. I want you to write down the word holy. You are chosen and you are holy. He says that we are holy and we're blameless. Write down chosen, write down holy, and write down blameless. Come on, 
I really want us to understand that God is reminding us who we are in Christ, is that if we have a relationship with Christ, that we are, chosen, we are chosen. We're not alone, guys. There should never be a time when we feel alone. If we know who we are in Christ, that we have this mindset that, 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 that we know who we are uh, in, in Christ and we know who our Father is, that we should never feel alone that we are chosen, that he actually chose us. It's hard to believe, I know. I, I have those moments where I, I have a hard time believing that he actually chose me with my faults, with my flaws, with the times that I don't even uh, talk to him. I'll go, I'll go a long time, if I could be honest with you, I'll go hours and not even talk to him. And I just, it just bothers me because he's so good to me. But guess what, even in those moments, even in those moments where I mess up, and guess what, pastors mess up. We're real people too. We mess up, and even in those times when I'm a human being and I mess up, I remember that God chose me in spite of that. Yeah. Yeah. That he went to the cross and he died for me in spite of that. And that's, a, that's an amazing thing, that not only did he choose me, but also that because of his son, Christ Jesus, he sees me as holy and he sees me as blameless. Chosen, holy, and blameless. Let's keep going. Verse five says that he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and will. I want you to write down predestined. We are chosen, we are holy, we are blameless, we're predestined for adoption. That reminds us that we're chosen by God to be his sons and daughters, to rule and reign with him, to dream with him, to be co-heirs with his son Jesus, that that's who we are in Christ. He says that we're predestined for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, verse six, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Verse seven, in him, we have redemption through his blood. I want you to write down that you are redeemed. You are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. He says, uh, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. I don't want you to only write down redeemed, I also want you to write down forgiven. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. I want you to write down the word rich. That should get a few shouts, right? Praise God, I'm rich. <laughs> rich. We are rich in wisdom and understanding. How many of you know that you are more blessed if you are rich in wisdom and understanding than you are if you're rich financially? Not that it's a bad thing to be blessed financially. Not that it's a bad thing to, be, to, to have uh, abundant finances. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. But if you have that in place of being rich in wisdom and understanding, it's a false hope. It's something that uh, the, the moth and the, the canker worm can come and, and steal away. But if you're rich in wisdom and understanding, it's something that the, the enemy can't touch. It's something that the world, no matter who it is in this world, it's something that they can't touch because it's given to you by God. So we are rich in wisdom and understanding. He goes on to say in verse eight, he, lavish, he lavishes these, these gifts on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. He says in verse 10, to be put into effect when the times will reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Verse 11 says, in him we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. I want you to write this down. I want you to write down the word included. That we'll find out multiple times throughout the, this book of Ephesians that even those who are far away from Christ are included in this gospel, included in this mystery, that he goes after those ones who are far away from him. And he desires for them to, the awakening, for an awakening to happen in their life so that they are reminded of who they are in Christ. This is the great mystery of the gospel, that there are, 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 are that, that, that uh, both the uh, Israelites and uh, those who are outside of Israel are all grafted into this family in Christ. I believe it's Ephesians 2.22. He says uh, that you two are being uh, built together, become a dwelling place where God's spirit lives. And he's talking about you too. He's talking about those who uh, were of the circumcision and those who weren't, the Gentiles and the Jews alike. 
are being built together to become a dwelling where God's spirit can live. So we know that the great mystery of this gospel is that we are included in this good news. Amen, come on. That God, died, that God sent his son Jesus to die for us and because of what Jesus did on the cross, we are included if we believe and we, if we know that we are in him, that we are included in this family. This is good news. So uh, we're, we have to know that we're included. He goes on to say, uh, you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth how many of you know that we hear the message of the truth in this building? Yes, Come on, it's the good news that what Jesus did on the cross. We hear this message of truth and he says, if you hear, have heard this message of truth, if you have allowed this message to penetrate your heart, then you are also included in Christ. But it doesn't stop there. It's kind of what Pastor Dan was talking about on Sunday. He said that uh, it, it, you know, it's all well and good to be saved, but when we're saved, we don't just poof up to heaven, right? We don't just... You know, it is, it's, being saved isn't the end of God's story for our life. That there's a greater way that he desires for us to live. And it it's only happens if we open ourselves up for the Holy Spirit to come in and lead us and guide us and uh, help us make decisions and help us uh, to go this way when we should go this way or to stay when we should stay or to, to, to talk when we should talk or to be quiet when we should be quiet. That's, the, that's what it is about being spirit-led. But listen to this promise right here. He says, when you heard this message of truth, you were included in Christ, the gospel of your salvation. And when you were believed, you were marked in him with a seal, which is the promised Holy Spirit. If you believe in Christ and you are saved, you are marked with a seal that is the promised Holy Spirit. I want you to write down the word marked. So not only are you chosen, holy, blameless, predestined, to be a son and daughter of God. You are redeemed, you're forgiven, you're rich in wisdom and understanding, you are included and you are marked with a seal, which is the promised Holy Spirit. Guys, everybody in this room, if you are in Christ, you should look different to the world because you have been marked with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Everywhere that you go, people should recognize that the Holy Spirit, there's something different about you. The Holy Spirit is upon you, right? I always know you know where Piper is because she, she just loves Cheetos. Like my, you know, teenagers, your, your relationship goals should be to find someone uh, that loves you like Piper loves cheese. She, I'm, no, I'm not kidding. She carries around a bag of shredded cheese and she like cuddles it. All day long, Wayne. She, she spills it, she just picks it up. Cheese, she just loves cheese. But she also, as a result, of course, loves Cheetos. And you know when you eat Cheetos, they get all over your fingers, right? Well, when they get all over your fingers, if you're a year and a half old, uh, the, che the cheese from your fingers gets all over the walls and the TV and the couch and the bathroom. But I can always know where my daughter has been when I see the residue of Cheeto. And I say, oh, Piper's been there. This is the way that we should be in the world. Is that everyone should know that we have been there by what we leave behind. That when people show up to your workplace, that they should feel something different. And, in, and you'll find out in chapter two, I'm not preaching chapter two, but you'll find out in chapter two, it's not by our own works. It's by faith. By grace through faith that we have this indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and as a result of that, everywhere that we go, every word that we say, every song that we sing, every movie that we make, every, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, even just a phrase or a word that you say to somebody, it should have the breath of the Holy Spirit behind it to where it changes people's lives. Come on, guys. I know this isn't like a wildly exciting word, but I know that God has given this to you. He says, everywhere that you go, they should know that you have uh, been there because you should leave behind the presence of Jesus everywhere you go. Everything that you put your hand to should have the, the, the breath of the Holy Spirit behind it. Because guys, if we're writing songs and producing songs or if we're making movies or whatever and we're just doing it our own might, it'll flop. But it's not, by, it's not by our own might or by our own power that should, we should be operating. It's by the one who is uh, operating through us, amen? So everywhere that we should go, he reminds us that we are marked with a seal, which is the promised Holy Spirit. And uh, finally, he says, uh, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession? Just put your hand over your heart and say, I'm God's possession. I actually just want you to say, I'm his. Come on, say it again, I'm his. Say, hello, my name is his. That's who you are in him. You don't have to be anything else. 
Can I just free some people tonight? You don't have to be what the world wants you to be. All you have to be is his. Don't let people in the world put labels on you. Don't let people in the church put labels on you. That all oh, you're just crosswalk guard. No. No, you're you're his. And and being his as a crosswalk guard is way better than being somebody who lives for everything in the world and is a CEO of the biggest company that you can think of. Come on, I'd rather be a, a, a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to be in the presence of kings and leaders and be well known. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're his, you're powerful. And Paul reminds us of this in this chapter. He says, man, come on. God is all powerful. He is over everything and both in heaven and on earth. And as a result of that, so are we. Amen. Come on, Pastor Terry, you believe that? Yes. That Satan is under your feet because you know who your father is. Come on, Shiloh, don't let anybody in your life tell you anything different. And I'm not, I'm not gonna skirt around it because you're younger. I'm gonna tell you right now that you have Satan under your feet. That there's nothing that the enemy can do. The people can come in and say this and that about your dad and you, know, you, say, you stand up and you say, you know what, I know who my father is. And I'm confident in that. Say whatever you want, but I know who I am in him. And then just walk away and say deuce. Deuces, or whatever they say. See ya. I don't have time for your drama. It's one of the most important things that we, that, that, that we can be sure of in our life is our identity in Christ. Amen. Come on, I have no notes. I just got back from vacation and I'm in the middle of camp. But this is God speaking to you. There is nothing more important to you to know uh, rather than knowing who you are in Christ. In him. It's in him that you live, move, and have your being. It's not anything that you do on your, by your own might or by your own power. It's all God working through you. Come on, just be a vessel. Just be available. God cares more about your availability than he does your ability. He could care less about your talent. He just is interested in your yes. Come on, you think of Isaiah chapter six. Here I am, Lord, send me. He'll take care of the rest. He'll, he'll send the angel, he'll take the, the coal and cleanse your lips and he will send you. But he's looking for that obedience. He's not looking for that ability. I, I guarantee you that he puts people on this stage who are, who are more willing than he does uh, put people on the stage who are more talented. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence is everything. Knowing who you are in Christ will keep you from being swayed by every wind of doctrine that comes at you, by every opinion of someone, especially younger people. We are so swayed by opi pe opinions of people. Well, you know, you're really, you're really good at this, but you're not so great at that. It's not what, it doesn't matter what they say, it's what God says about you. We gotta have confidence in knowing who we are in Christ, amen? So keep those 10 things that you wrote down. I don't know if I gave you the last one or not, but it's his. Chosen, holy, blameless, predestined, redeemed, forgiven, rich, included, marked, and finally his. That you wake up, you're doing well if you wake up every day, look in the mirror and say, God, I'm yours. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. What do you want me to do today? You know what? That sets you up for a really good day. It's just a, a blessed obedience. It says it's better to obey than sacrifice, right? God, what do you want me to do today? You see somebody over there and they look like they're having a rough day. You ask the Holy Spirit, should I speak to them? And he says, yes, and you go over to speak to them. Holy Spirit, I have no idea what to say. What should I say? Listen, because he'll tell you. It says the Holy Spirit will give you uh, utterance when you have nothing to say. He will bring to remembrance this word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Get it in you and you'll know what to say. Amen. Where was I? So verse 15, Paul prays a prayer. Uh, and he, he gives us a prayer that we can a, uh, absolutely pray for one another. Verse 15 through 18, he says this. He says, for this reason, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Come on, that's a good prayer. 
I, I challenge you and I encourage you, if there's somebody that you haven't spoken to in a while, or if there's somebody that you know is just struggling, I encourage you to send them your version of that prayer. You say that, there, I know that there was a time when you believed in Jesus. I know that you had a love for all of God's people. And I am praying that that wisdom and revelation would flood you right where you are. Don't beat them up over it, telling them they missed it. Come on, encourage them. Encourage them that they are the sons and daughters of God that he created them to be. They might've forgotten about it, but your words have life and death in them. And if you send a text or, 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 or ask him to go to coffee with you, I guarantee you that life, if you got the word of God in you and, the whole, and you're led by the Holy Spirit, that when you have that coffee with them, you sit down at that table and you begin to just encourage them. You say, man, remember that time that we, uh, that we just went to that revival meeting or whatever it was, you know, that we, that we were uh, in youth group or whatever. You just encourage them and say that you remind them of that time when they were fully sold out to God. It'll change their life. Because it will, remind, it will remind them of that God DNA on the inside of them. You know what I'm saying? I encourage you guys to pray that prayer for our pastor. It's, impo- it's imperative that our, our pastor have clear vision. And um, I think we would be better suited to spend more time praying for him than uh, questioning him. So here's a simple prayer that you can pray for our pastor. Come on, you don't have to text him and tell him, let him have vacation, but just pray it and say, for this reason, ever since our pastor had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and he loved all God's people, that we have not stopped giving thanks for you, pastor, that we are remembering you in our prayers. We keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that our pastor may know him better. I pray that our pastor's eyes uh, of his heart may be enlightened so that he may know the hope to which he has called you to him. Uh, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Pray it for those that you work with. Pray that their eyes would be opened. Pray that they would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation imparted upon them and watch your workplace change. Pray it every day. If nothing else, it'll change you. You'll begin to see them different. They might have a cuss word, every other uh, word coming out of their mouth, but guess what? God is going to begin to, to, to show you that they are chosen and they are holy and they are blameless in him. It might not look like that yet on the outside, but you keep speaking that over them, eventually what's on the, outside, or on the inside of them will come out. Did you know that God put himself in every person that he's created? If it weren't true, then Psalm wouldn't be true where it says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in our mother's womb. God has placed his spirit on the inside of everybody, but the ones that you see that you are so disgusted by, it's just because that has been buried for so long under so many lies, under under so much dirt, under so much judgment, under so much condemnation that they just even forgot that God even made them. So get your shovel out and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and start digging for that God DNA on the inside of them. Dig for that good on the inside of them and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Don't just say, you know what? I see that your life is really bad. Why don't you come to church with me? Pray for them right there. Speak life into them right there. Dig at them right there and begin to bring that good that you know is on the inside of them out to the surface. That should be our mission every day is that we find that we are digging for good every day. So he continues on kind of in this prayer in verse 19, he says, well, 18 Uh, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people. Verse 19, he reminds us of the power that we have in Christ, he says, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength which he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only for this age, but also the one to come. He lays out the government of God, the structure of God. He said, God has placed all things. Come on, say all things. things. God has placed all things under his feet and has appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body. If God would encourage you in one more thing tonight, listen what he says to you right here. He says, you are the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Did you know that you sitting in this room tonight are the fullness of God's plan? (laughs) That's good news, man. That excites me. Like I can wake up and I can say, I'm the fullness of God's plan. It's nothing special that I've done. It's by grace that I'm the fullness of his plan. It's by grace that this church 
is operating and functioning together in unity and, and saying that we are the fullness of God's plan. It's by grace that this valley is the fullness of God's plan. It's by grace that churches can work together in unity. Pastors can pray together and, and meet together and advance the kingdom together by grace, uh, knowing that we are the fullness of Christ, that we are the hope for the world. Not only are you his, but you're the hope for this world. Young, old, quiet, loud, however God created you, you are the hope for this world. You're a hope dealer. <laughs> Maybe you once were a dope dealer, but guess what? God has turned your life around. You're not dealing dope anymore. You're dealing hope. Hey, you want some? Here you go. Hey, I got some stuff for you. Some hope. You just slide them a little reminder. Hey, God calls you fearfully and wonderfully made. Hey, God calls you holy and blameless. Not sure if you uh, want any of this or not. It's pretty good stuff. Here you go. Never sure if you've had this one before or not. But it will blow your mind. <laughs> Have some hope. Hope for everybody. Hey, thanks for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this message. Real quick, there's three things that we want you to do. First, we just want to encourage you to share this video with someone who might need it or comment below. We'd love to see how these videos are impacting people. Second, if you feel led, click the Give button below to support the ministry so that we can continue to love people, build strong families, and transform cities all over the world. And last, if there's anything that stuck out to you from this message that you would like to share, or if you need prayer, email us at prayforme at mfctoday.org. Thanks again for watching.